Mr. Vice President, uh, Senator Booker called your new criminal justice reform plan, quote, an inadequate solution to what is a raging crisis in our country, unquote. Why is Senator Booker wrong? Well, I don't, I think he is wrong. I think we should work together. He has a similar plan. I think that we should change the way we look at prisons. Right now, we're in a situation where when someone is convicted of a, of a drug crime, they end up going to jail and to prison. They should be going to rehabilitation. They shouldn't be going to prison. When in prison, they should be learning to read and write and not just sit in there and learn how to be better criminals. That when they get out of prison, they should be in a situation where they have access to everything they would have had before, including Pell Grants for education, including making sure that they're able to have housing, public housing, including they have all the opportunities that were available to them because we want them to become better citizens. That's the essence of what my plan in detail lays out. I'm happy to discuss it more in detail if the Senator would want to. And so I, uh, you know, I, I, I looked at it anyway. I, that's what I think my plan, I know what my plan does, and I think it's not dissimilar to what the Senator said. We should be working together on getting things done. Senator Booker, problem. your response? Well, my response is that this is a crisis in our country because we have treated issues of race and poverty, mental health and addiction with locking people up and not lifting them up. And Mr. Vice President has said that since the 1970s, every major crime bill, every crime bill, major and minor, has had his name on it. And sir, those are your words, not, not mine. And this is one of those instances where the house was set on fire and you claimed responsibility for those laws. And you can't just now come out with a plan to put out that fire. We have got to have far more bold action mm -hmm. on criminal justice reform, like having you, true Booker. marijuana justice, which means Thank that we legalize Booker. it on a federal level Thank you, Senator Booker. and reinvest the profits in communities you, that have Booker. been disproportionately targeted by Vice marijuana Biden, enforcement. Vice President Biden, I want to give you a chance to respond. The fact is that the bills that the president, that the, excuse me, the future president here, that, that, that the senator is talking about, are bills that were passed years ago, and they were passed overwhelmingly. Since 2007, I, for example, tried to get the crack powder cocaine totally d disparity totally eliminated. In 2007, you became mayor, and you had a police department that was, you went out and you hired Rudy Giuliani's guy, you en engaged in stop and frisk, you had 75% of those stops reviewed as illegal, you found yourself in the situation where three times as many African-American kids were caught in that chain and caught up. The Justice Department came after you for saying you were, you were engaging in behavior that was inappropriate. And then, in fact, uh, and nothing happened the entire time you were mayor. Thank you, Sen uh, Senator Booker. You want to respond? Well, first of all, I'm grateful that he endorsed my presidency already. But I'll yeah. tell you this. It's no secret that I inherited a, criminal, uh, a police department with massive problems and decades-long challenges. But the head of the ACLU has already said, the head of the New Jersey ACLU, that I put forth national standard setting accountability. Mr. Time, Vice President, Mr. Vice President, I didn't interrupt you. Sorry, Please show I me that respect, sir. We have a system right now that's broken. And if you want to compare records, and frankly, I'm shocked that you do, uh, I am happy to do that. Because all of the problems that he is talking about that he created, I actually led the bill that got passed into law that reverses the damage that your bills, that you were, frankly, to correct you, Mr. Vice President, you were bragging, calling it the Biden crime bill up till thank, 2015. Thank you, Senator. Vice President Biden. Number one, the bill he talks about is a bill that, in my, our administration, we passed. We passed that bill that you added on to. That's the bill, in mm. fact, you passed. And the fact of the matter is, secondly, the, there was nothing done for the entire eight years he was mayor. There was nothing done to deal with the police department that was corrupt. Why did you announce in the first day a zero tolerance policy of stop and frisk and hire Rudy Giuliani's guy in 2007 when I was trying to get rid of the crack cocaine? Um, Mr. Vice President, there's a saying in my community, you're dipping into the Kool-Aid and you don't even know the flavor. Uh, you need to... <laughs> You need to come to the city of Newark and see the reforms that we put in place. The New Jersey head of the ACLU has said that I embraced reforms, not just in action, but in deed. Sir, you are trying to shift the view from what you created. There are people right now in prison for life for drug offenses because you stood up and used that tough on crime, phony rhetoric that got a lot of people elected 
but destroyed communities like mine. This isn't about the past, sir. This is about the present right now. I believe in Thank redemption. You, I'm happy you evolved. I want to bring in but Secretary. But you offered no redemption to the people in wanna, prison right now. I want to bring life. in Secretary Castro. Your response, sir? Yeah, you know, I agree with Senator Booker that uh, I agree with Senator Booker that a lot of uh, what uh, Vice President um, helped author in '94 was a mistake. And he has flip-flopped on these things, and that's clear. But let me say, when we talk about criminal justice reform, there are a lot of things that we can talk about, sentencing reform, cash bail reform, investing in public defenders, diversion programs. I'm proud that I'm the only candidate that has put forward a police reform plan, because we have a police system that is broken, and we need to fix it. And whether it's uh, the case of someone like Tamir Rice or Michael Brown uh, or Eric Garner, where the Trump Justice Department just decided not to pursue charges. We need to ensure we have a national use of force standard and that we end qualified immunity for police officers so that we can hold them accountable for using excessive force. Thank you, force. Secretary Castro. I, 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 I want to bring in Governor Inslee. Governor Inslee, your response? Uh, let me suggest that people come out to the state of Washington and see what criminal justice reform looks like. Our effort to reduce racial disparity. I'm proud that I was the first governor to offer pardons to thousands of people with drug crimes. Now we're vacating more tens of thousands. We've eliminated the death penalty. And importantly, we've done this. When people come out of the legal system and they've done their responsibility to the citizens, we need to make sure they can get a job. We have banned the box so that people can actually get a job when they come out. And I've got to argue with my, my friend, Secretary Castro, we haven't just put forward a plan we have adopted probably one of the best police accountability measures and train our police officers in de-escalation te techniques so we have less violence. In Secretary, I, I Secretary Castro, uh, your response to Governor Inslee? Well, that it's much more than that, because what we see, and this was a good example the other day of, of uh, the Department of Justice not uh, going after Officer Pantaleo, that, you know, Officer Pantaleo used a chokehold that was prohibited by NYPD he did that for seven seconds, 11 different times. Eric Garner said that he couldn't breathe. Uh, he knew what he was doing, that he was killing Eric Garner, and yet he has not been brought to justice. That police officer should be off the street. Mayor de Blasio, Mayor de Blasio, why is that police officer still on the force, the one who killed Eric Garner? Please well, respond. Let me tell you, I know the Garner family. They've gone through extraordinary pain. They are waiting for justice, and they're going to get justice. There's finally going to be justice. I have confidence in that in the next 30 days in New York. You know why? Because for the first time, we are not waiting on the Federal Justice Department, which told the city of New York that we could not proceed because the Justice Department was pursuing their prosecution. And years went by, and a lot of pain accrued. And in the meantime, what I'm working on is making sure, and I have for five years, there will never be another tragedy. There'll never be another Eric Garner because we're changing fundamentally how we police. Thank you, man. But there's one last point I have to say about the Justice Department. The Vice President, for two and a half of those years, Mr. Vice President, tell us what did you do to try and spur on the Justice Department Thank to you. act Thank you, in Mayor. the Garner Thank case? Thank you, Mayor de Blasio. Uh, Vice President Biden, you can respond to that. We did a lot. Number one, we made sure we reduced the federal prison population by 38,000 people, number one. Number two, we, in fact, insisted that we change the rules that police engage in. They had that we provided for body cameras. We made sure that there were a lot of things that were changed in the process, but 38,000 people in the federal system were released under the system. And so the fact is that there's a lot we've done. But here's the deal. The fact is that we're talking about things that occurred a long, long time ago. And now, all of a sudden, you know, I, I, I find it fascinating. Everybody's talking about how terrible I am on these issues. Barack Obama knew exactly who I was. He had, he had 10 lawyers do a background check on everything about me on civil rights and civil liberties. And he chose me, and he said it was the best decision he Thank made. Thank you, Mr. I'll Vice President. I'll take his judgment. Yeah, Mr. Yang, your response? I speak for just about everyone watching when I say I would trust anyone on this stage much more than I would trust our current president on matters of criminal justice. We cannot tear each other down. We have to focus on beating Donald Trump in 2020. I want to share a story that a prison guard, a corrections officer in New Hampshire said to me. He said, we should pay people to stay out of jail because we spend so much when they're behind bars. 
Right now, we think we're saving money. We just end up spending the money in much more dark and punitive ways. We should put money directly into people's hands, certainly when they come out of prison, but before they go to prison. Thank you, Mr. Yang. I want to bring in Senator Gillibrand. You heard earlier Mayor de Blasio respond to Secretary Castro on the question of why the police officer who killed Eric Gardner is still on the NYPD. Was that response adequate? Please respond. No, it's, he should be fired. He should be fired now. I, I, sat, I sat down with Eric Gardner's mother, and I can tell you, when you've lost your son, when he begged for breath, when you know because you have a video, when you know he said, I can't breathe, so many times over and over again, when you know he used an illegal chokehold, that person should be fired. And as, as I was, if I was the mayor, I'd fire him. But as president, I would make sure that we had a full investigation, that the report would be made public. And if I wasn't satisfied, we would have a consent degree.